Hi everybody, my name is Carissa and I am here as part of the Sean Petit creative team. I'm going to do some watercoloring today using one, a, one of these stencils from Sean Petit. Um, the stencil that I'm using is called Two Deer and you can see that it has two different sizes of this kind of silhouette of a deer and I'll be using the larger one for my project today. I am using the, I don't know how to pronounce this, Shizen Professional Grade Watercolor Paper. It's 100% rag paper, cotton, and uh, it's got this amazing texture on it and I'm just super excited to use it. For my stenciling, I'm going to be using this Graphite Aqua L Pencil by Faber-Castell and I will be basically using the stencil to create my outline that I will follow uh, for my watercoloring. And I'm gonna go all around the stencil except for the top of the head of the deer because I want to put on um, that crown of flowers. And so I just didn't wanna have that line anywhere around that so I left that part blank but I um, stenciled the rest of it so when I'm watercoloring I always have two jars of water off to the side um, that's just so that I can have some clean water and then one jar will get nice and dirty and I will also have some paper towels on hand just so that I can uh, wipe any excess water off of my brush I am using my Daniel Smith palette, and if you are watching this video on my channel, which is Inky Fairy Designs, I will put a link here. You can take a look at this entire palette and all of my favorite colors, kind of why I like them. And I end up using the Aussie Red Gold, the Quinn Pur Burnt Orange, and the Rose of Ultramarine, and then I believe I went with Undersea Green for my leaves, and I also use a bit of Jane's Gray, which is a new color this year. So to start out, I'm going to go ahead and wet my brush. I am starting with my roses, and I do a very abstract <laughs> type of painting with my florals and um, so I just start with like these little half circle C shapes um, that are very concentrated in the middle and then I will clean off my brush to get some of that extra pigment off and draw the color out uh, to give some depth to the petals as they kind of open and bloom in nature. So I um, kept this part in real time just for this first floral and then um, I do have to speed up the video quite a bit um, to fit it in the time frame so you're guys not sitting here watching 50 minutes of paint drying. Um, you can just see the beautiful project unfold. But I think you can still see the technique. Um, you can see that I am using a wet on dry technique, uh, which is what they, or we call it in watercoloring. Uh, and that's just where the paper is completely dry and then I bring in the wet pigment onto the paper and then draw it out with more um, water. So you can see I'm kind of thinking here. I used those three colors for the flowers and I dropped in um, the colors throughout all three. So they do have this cohesive um, color throughout because when I first did it, it was just like one you know each color for each flower and I just wanted them to kind of blend into each other a little bit more so I just dropped little bits of the color throughout and now I am just painting in some leaves uh, using that undersea green and then I'm going to use that Jane's gray to bring in um, a more cooler tone uh, shadow kind of leaf um, I love this color because it's kind of blue it's called Jane's gray but it's kind of like an indigo um, almost different than a Payne's gray um, I think it's a little bit more cooler but it's a really really pretty color so you can see here I really didn't like um, where I placed this particular leaf and so the great thing about this paper and these 
paints is that um, I can like erase <laughs> for lack of a better word um, I can bring in more water water it down and pick it up with my paper towel like you saw me there and it's super easy um, you need to have a good quality paper and good quality paint for that to really work some pigments are very um, staining and they don't work as well but the Daniel Smith's are amazing and as long as you're working on um, a really good high quality paper um, if you do little things like that um, you'll be able to fix it so I'm just adding a little bit more filler type florals here um, some berries and then I brought in one of my favorite purples which is imperial purple um, it has a really blue kind of granulation in it and added these little like twigs so this isn't anything like uh, natural <laughs> it's just colors that I really like and I thought they looked pretty together so there's my little floral crown for our deer I'm gonna let that completely dry before I go in um, and fill in the rest of the silhouette so for this um, part I'm going to um, use buff titanium which is a really pretty almost opaque uh, kind of tan color and I'm using that on the antlers and then I um, will drop in some iridescent scarab red I love iridescent colors you get some amazing granulation it's a red but it has these like navy tones to it it's just so pretty so while the buff titanium paint was still wet on my paper I dropped that in and you can see how it kind of flows and starts to mix and blend on its own and that's one of the things that I absolutely love about watercolors is the way that um, the different paints uh, kind of play and move within each other um, so I'm doing the same thing I'm still doing um, mostly um, kind of a combination of dry on or wet on dry and then wet on wet so here you can see I totally just I don't know what happened I lost control of my brush fell on my paper and I had a little boo-boo there but like I explained earlier I'm able to erase that very simply by adding some clean water to it scrubbing it a little bit with my brush and then picking it up with the paper towel so there's no reason for me to start over because I'm able to do that so now I'm just going to finish up this antler just the same way as I did the other one dropping in that red color into the buff titanium and I'm just gonna let it move and kind of blend as it dries so again I was thinking okay now what color do I want to paint the uh, you know the silhouette of this animal and I ended up going with one of my favorite colors which is shadow violet uh, it has um, it's a really really uh, kind of muted purple color and it granulates so pretty you can see it here on this um, rough watercolor paper uh, that's one of the reasons I love to work on a cold press or a rough watercolor paper because you can really see the granulation occur as it kind of moves into the nooks and crannies um, this color has some blue undertones the violet very dark shadowy moody purple um, that you can see here as I drop in even more pigment to the bottom and then I just lighten it up as it goes um, towards the top and then I tilted my paper a little bit to move that um, pigment around and you can see when I um, pick up some of that it leaves that really like light blue color and I just love it it's really really pretty so I'm gonna fuss with this a little bit and then I will let that dry completely and um, I loved it the way it was uh, you know just that stark white uh, contrast around it but I absolutely love some teal and I thought I would make um, just a little bit of some color around the silhouette using Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. The genuine colors from Daniel Smith are 
gorgeous. They are natural kind of um, stone ground um, minerals that are created into watercolors. So they have some fun properties and a lot of them have some shimmer to them. This one does not, but it granulates really pretty. So I'm just kind of adding this little shadow around it and blending it out. So for this technique, I am definitely using a wet and wet. Um, so this project has a lot of different um, watercolor techniques in it. Um, the wet and wet is beautiful for creating like really soft, pretty blended backgrounds. And I love to use them for like these little shadow areas around <clears throat> an image or painting or something like that. And so what I do is I wet the area with my paintbrush with just some clean water and then I drop in the color and you can see how it starts to move and just like bloom out with that color. But I won't go into where the area is dry. So to soften it up, I will clean off my brush from the paint and then just uh, draw it out until I have a nice soft edge. So I'm just going to continue to do that around. I absolutely, like, when I picked up this stencil from Sean Petit uh, as part of her creative team, I had this project in my mind immediately when I was making my selections. I knew that um, while I am a mixed media artist, I am also uh, a watercolor artist, and I love to use different um products and tools in my paintings and um, sometimes drawing isn't super natural for me. I don't feel like it's something easy for me to do and so I wouldn't attempt to create like this silhouette on my own. So using the stencil makes it super easy. I can just um, use a water soluble pencil and create that outline and then I can do what I love which is coloring and creating these really beautiful paintings using the watercolor. So I felt that the blue was quite dark so I'm using my paper towel again to kind of pick up some of that um, excess pigment and you can see I just use some clean water and scrub it a little bit and then I'm pretty much done. Um, I'm going to lift it up here. It is still wet so um, the paint is still you know moving in the fibers of those papers but I like to go ahead and let it dry naturally and then I will show you some pictures close-ups of it completely dry and finished. So I'm super excited to be part of the creative team this year with Sean Petit and all of the other amazing ladies. I hope you enjoyed this kind of different project and way to use um, her stencils and I can't wait to share more with you over the next year. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye.